<laughs> Can you get down there? <laughs> Our names are Mike and Heather. We're traveling the US in our van Appa on a mission to visit all 50 states. Subscribe and join us as we try to figure out this whole van life thing. As always, thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to Kentucky. Our first stop here in Kentucky is Mammoth Cave National Park, which has two things that we're super big fans of. One being a national park, adding Getting a stamp. that passport stamp, yeah. Yep, adding the stamp to our passport. And the second aspect of it is the caves. We are going to be able to take a tour of that tomorrow morning, but tonight we're just gonna enjoy camping and having a campsite that we can kind of spread out and cook some food. I definitely need to get some more water. It is about 36 degrees Fahrenheit right now near Mammoth Cave. It's hard to believe that we're kind of in what people would consider the southern states because of how cold the weather has been. It's overcast, but it's definitely cooling off. In addition to our pasta dish, we are also going to be making hot chocolate because we need some extra warmth this evening. Yeah, anything to try to stay warm. We're in full and fall now. There's more leaves on the ground than there are on the trees. So <laughs> it is it is full. One of the things we love about being in the national parks is the opportunity to see wildlife. Just the variety of animals you can see depending on what park you're in is just really amazing. And staying in the campsites is really cool because you get an opportunity to see some of these animals in an environment where they're not necessarily afraid of humans because they're safe here there's no hunting and anything like that and so we just saw a pretty good sized buck walk right behind our campsite and just cool as you can imagine just casually strolling across not really paying any attention looking over at the dogs that were barking at it because it was something different. We really love getting the opportunity to get into the national parks and see the wildlife and enjoy being out in nature. One of the things that we've added to our loadout for the van is a Yakima road shower. So it's four gallons, it sits on top of the van and it allows us to take showers when we're out boondocking in the middle of nowhere. We always try and keep it full and pressurized in case we are in a situation where we can make use of it. But with the weather getting colder and getting closer to freezing, I wanna make sure that we empty the water out so that we don't do any damage to it moving into the winter months. So I'm going to empty the water now, not really a, intensive process, but something I just want to make sure we do before we have any issues. And that should do it. The original plan was to have a campfire tonight, but honestly, it is freezing out there and it is 5.30 now and it is pitch black. So instead, we're gonna drive to the front of the campground and do laundry. It is much needed at this point in time. There's also the showers up there as well. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. So I got the laundry bag ready and our shower bag ready and we're ready to go. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can tell, but our usual way of having our van living space area lit is not happening this evening. So normally we're able to run lights on either side of the ceiling and those provide us with the ability to see and have light in the back of the van when we're in bed mode or just kind of hanging out back here. But 
It's been about a week of cloudy weather and our solar is depleted. There's still enough to run the fan and the fridge, but not enough to power the lights. So we are currently without solar power to charge those. So that's why we're in the dark and Heather is holding a flashlight on that side of the camera. Not really a big deal. We should be getting some brighter days and sunnier weather coming up, which will allow us to recharge the solar. And we have the Jackery. And we have the Jackery, which allows us to run a little light that we can hook up off of the ceiling. It just makes the lighting in here kind of weird. Just the nature of living in a tiny van as we move into winter more and more where there's less and less sunny days, but not that big a deal. What we are going to be doing though is breaking out our cold weather sleeping bag. So we're gonna finish getting this blanket extended out, get ourselves ready for bed, and we will check in with you in the morning as we explore Mammoth Cave. So we'll see you then. So <laughs> it's about nine o'clock in the morning here in the National Park campsite. And it's cold. Yeah, it's about 32, maybe, maybe 36 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. I definitely was colder than that last night, so <laughs> we are, we've we got, survived. yeah, we survived. It, it's definitely been colder and colder. So this morning we have the car turned on with the heat on and we are bundled in the back trying to stay warm until the car heats up. Yeah. But living out of a van is a lot more interesting when it's freezing cold out. We're going to let the van warm up a little bit before we start getting ready <laughs> for the day. <laughs> As the sun is coming up, it is warming up, which I can really appreciate. There is blue skies and sun shining, which is good news for our solar so we can get some more charge to our batteries. Before we leave the campsite, we do have to fill up our water because that is also low at the moment. <laughs> So we have made our way from the campsite over to the area near the visitor center where we will be taking a tour at around 2.45. So we were able to book a historic tour through Mammoth Cave, which is one of their signature tours that they do here. So we're super excited, but because we had a little bit of time to kill and today is such a beautiful fall day, we decided to go out on the Heritage Walking Trail. There is a really cool overlook at the end of this Heritage Trail, which leaves from the visitor center. So we figured we'd go explore a little bit while we have some time to kill and maybe get a bite to eat for lunch when we get back to the van. We just walked past the historic entrance of the cave, so we got a little bit of a sneak peek. This is the longest cave system in the world, and we're gonna be able to walk in just a little part of it, but still very exciting. A short walk away from the visitor center later, we have made it to Sunset Point where we have the overlook of the valley here. So we made it to the end here and it's a really nice overlook. There's an educational placard with some information about the park. It was a nice walk. I'm glad we got a chance to get out and stretch our legs here above ground. Mm -hmm. Even though it was freezing cold last night, we've been definitely enjoying having the sun and the clear blue skies up overhead. Yep, but now we are heading back to the visitor center, back to our van for food. We have left the visitor center for a quick moment. It's just down the road still with an eyesight, but we came to a nearby picnic area to have a bite to eat for lunch before our tour starts at 2.45. We are going to dig into our food and then get ready to go on our tour and head underground into Mammoth Cave. And also listen to podcasts while we do that. We are back at the visitor center now getting ready to walk into our cave tour. It is already getting darker because we are in full on fall now. So it is about, well, 2.30, right? <laughs> when our tour is about to start and it is getting dark. So or at least cloudy and overcast and yeah. So by the time we get out of the cave, it's going to be pitch black. <laughs> We're excited to go check it out and learn some more about the longest cave system in the world. Our history here, we think goes back about 5,000 years ago. Prehistoric man was out here walking around out here in these woods and he felt some cold air. And he followed that cold air and he found this great big black hole in the ground. And he thought to himself, 
Hmm, wonder what's in there. <laughs> Can y'all believe in 1816, the owners of the cave had this wild and wacky idea that people would come here from all over the world to buy a ticket and tour this big black home ground. Who would do something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you get down there? <laughs> that, was a, that was a tricky one. <laughs> now you have lots of stuff. I know. This, is, this isn't too bad. We are making our way through this tour here and it's really cool. We get to go through some really low spots and really tight spots. So I think this is the closest we've got to cave splunking ever. I would love to go cave splunking. <laughs> Definitely on my bucket will. list. Yeah. Yes. But this is just really cool. And these are all natural formations, so we're making our way through these <laughs> narrow crevices and narrow spaces, and it's just a lot of fun. Oh. Another low one? Yeah. Hopefully we make that all the way. Uh, I think there's only one way you can really go. Oh my gosh, it's even longer. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> is this Tall Man's Misery? Oh, no, we're coming up to Fat Man's Misery. <laughs> We caught up to the group because there's a bunch point at Fat Man's Misery where everybody has to get really tiny and suck it in to go through. This is so much fun. Look at that. That's good. I'm pretty slick. Oh, yeah. Need to stretch it out. <laughs> Ooh, some steps. Ooh. Oh, these are slick. Skinny now. <laughs> is that a bathroom? Yeah, that's pretty funny. So we made it through Fat Man's Misery, which I think was equally miserable for tall people if they're <laughs> not flexible. <laughs> but that was actually a lot of fun. There was nothing miserable about it. We had a good time dodging our way through rocks. But now we are in a big open passageway, still trying to catch up to the front of the tour. <laughs> But when Stephen went through there the first time, he crawled through that on his belly in about an area about like this. And then when he came out the other end up there, he called that room Great Relief Hall. Not because there was bathrooms, but because <laughs> what a great relief to have crawled through that crawl through. I want to thank you for letting us spend time with you this afternoon. Folks, wherever those travels take you, be safe as you travel home or to your next destination. Aww. Thank you. Thank you all. You don't have to eat. Too. We just got done with the cave tour and it's not quite pitch black yet, but it's getting there. Yeah, the sun has set and it is definitely evening and we are just about past five o'clock. The cave system was pretty amazing. It wasn't anything like any of the other caves we'd been in. The environment was drier in the sense that there was less water coming down. So you didn't see the stalagmites and stalactites, but because of that, you had really cool geological features that created these passageways so there was a lot to see and learn in there and that was really cool. One of the things that we learned while we were on the cave tour was the story of a person who was enslaved that was a tour guide here named Stephen Bishop. He is maybe the most famous person associated with the cave in the sense of being a tour guide, in the sense of exploring and mapping new areas of the cave. And really what made Mammoth Cave what it is today. Yeah, so I'm mm -hmm. really happy that we learned about that. And we, after the tour, we're able to walk up to the tour guide cemetery where Stephen Bishop was laid to rest in 1857. So we are gonna hit the road now. We've got about two hours to go before we get to a place we'll call it for the night. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll have an action-packed day of exploring and learning about different iconic crafts from Kentucky, and that's bourbon and baseball bats. RV and bus parking, straight ahead. This morning we got up bright and early to make our way over to Buffalo Trace Distilleries. We've been told by all of our family members yeah, that we have to do a distillery tour. Two specifically recommended this, my dad and Mike's brother, so we couldn't pass up this particular distillery tour. What's really great about Buffalo Trace, aside from making, I'm assuming, really good bourbon, <laughs> is they offer complimentary tours and some of them even have tastings. We signed up for the Trace Tour. We're going to learn about the process of bourbon making here and some of the science behind it, which for me is really interesting. But now we gotta go pretend like we're bourbon connoisseurs to not stick out like dorks, so <laughs> let's go. Yeah. I know words like nose and hints and... Oaky afterbirth. Yeah, so we're, we're, we've are we got this in the bag. <laughs> it's a bit of a cold and rainy day here, but I found the alcohol warms you up pretty good, so 
I think we'll have a nice counter to some of the dreary weather that we're experiencing. They got all checked in for our tour. They gave us wristbands to know that we are over the age of 21. Yes. And now we are headed to the visitor center where we'll be able to actually pick up the tour. It's gonna be an hour long tour with a 15 minute tasting at the end, which is really cool. So they may give us some pointers on how to sound better uh, <laughs> educated about bourbon at that point. Pretty cool. In Kentucky, there's an entire, they call it the bourbon trail that you can do where you go and visit all of the different bourbon distilleries and go on all of the different tours. There's a number of them in Louisville. There's some outside of the city. So a lot that you can do here. Welcome to Buffalo Trace. You're standing in the oldest continuously operating distillery in the United States. We didn't become a state until 1792. So about six years before we became a state, we were distilling on this site. Absolutely. <laughs> I grew up in Kentucky believing if it's made in Kentucky, it's bourbon. If it's made anywhere else, it's whiskey. Guys, I still think that should be true, but Congress didn't necessarily agree. So this warehouse here was built in 1907. We have finished with the tour. It was absolutely amazing. We learned a lot of fun facts. And of course you exit through the gift shop. So we got some goodies as well. Now we're gonna head back to the van. We have made it back to the van with our loot from the gift shop. None of this is for us, by the way. It's for all of the actual bourbon fans in our life. But yes, we got the special Weller bottle. The tour itself was absolutely fantastic. Our tour guide was amazing. Yes. He was so knowledgeable and passionate. He almost made me cry at one point in time hearing about some of his stories. If you are coming here for one of the complimentary tours and you get Jimmy, you're definitely in good hands because I can't think of a better way to have gone through and yeah. learned about the process of making bourbon, to learn about the history of the factory and the distillery. Uh -huh. It just was really awesome. And for us with really no basis of knowledge, I feel like I know a lot more about bourbon in general, mm -hmm. the culture and the history behind it. There are a bunch of other factories and distilleries and tours that you can take. This was the one that we chose and I think we definitely chose correctly. Yeah, and we met a few people who are doing multiple bourbon tours just today. So you can yeah. <laughs> tour a lot of bourbon factories. That being said, we are not going on another bourbon factory tour today, but we are still going on a factory tour. One that I am slightly more excited about because it doesn't involve <laughs> drinking alcohol that burns the back of my throat. So let's head that way now. Yes. <laughs> I think we're here. <laughs> We just finished up at the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to film the tour itself. It's a place that pro baseball players come so they can pick out the wood that they want used for their bats specifically. It was interesting because there's a separate production line for professional bats as opposed to the ones that are for commercial use to sell to the public and for me one of the best parts was at the end in the museum they had historic bats that you could hold yeah um, bats that were used by baseball legends like Derek Jeter and Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth they had players representing each team in the MLB so if you were a fan of one team you could find them uh, Heather and I grabbed Derek Jeter's bat uh, he is a Yankees player and to be able to hold Babe Ruth's bat was just an incredible experience so all in all a fun time here in downtown Louisville at the Louisville Slugger Factory and Museum. We did walk through the gift shop, but we didn't get these at the gift shop. These actually came complimentary with our tour, so we each have mini bats. Although there is one thing in the gift shop that I totally would buy, which is the Sandlot movie signed cast 
picture. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. So might have to go back one day and buy that. But for now, $500 on an autographed picture is a little bit out of the budget. But it is about five o'clock and we are starving. I looked up online of like must try things when you come to Kentucky and a lot of people say the Derby pie, which is like a chocolate pie. TM, Derby pie on. TM. Yeah, we read that the recipe for Derby pie are the only people that can call it Derby pie and everybody else has like some like Kentucky horse racing pie. Yeah, knock off pecan and chocolate horse racing yeah, pie. Yeah, <laughs> but we have to look for that. And then one of the things that I was surprised at, apparently Louisville has its own style of pizza. So we're gonna go try to find some Louisville pizza. I think we're gonna head to the original place that it was invented. Where should we leave our new clubs? I don't know, but we can use this as like a security thing in our van now too. Yeah, each of us take one or one of us can dual wield or- okay, I'll hold on to these, you're gonna hurt yourself. We are here at Imposeries, which is a famous pizza place in Louisville. As we were walking in, there's a bunch of awards on the wall and we have found ourselves in a booth that is conveniently decorated with Buffalo Trace Distillery, which I'm still wearing my wristband from earlier today. So just a fun little instance. But the first thing that we got is beer cheese with pretzels. So I had to laugh at the way that it was labeled on the menu that you order beer cheese and the pretzels come as a side because beer cheese is a very popular thing here in Louisville as well. So while we're waiting for our pizza, we got some beer cheese with pretzels. I feel like you can't go wrong with carbs and cheese in any form but that's good. So we got our pizza delivered to our table, which we're very excited about. So similar to Chicago, this is a deep dish pizza, but unlike Chicago, it's done in layers. So you have a sauce layer, and then you have your cheese layer, then you have toppings, and then you have, I believe, more cheese, and then your toppings again. So we went with the four cheese, so you can't really see the different layers quite as good on here, but believe you me, they were there. When Mike lifted it up, you could see the strings of cheese. This pizza is all about the layers. It was invented by Benny Impelizari. This is his recipe. The crust is really good and nice and crispy, and it holds all the toppings surprisingly well for how thin the crust is. And that's not a, uh, a complaint. I actually really like thin crust pizza, but it's not getting soggy at all, and it's holding all the toppings in just perfectly. Heather had success cutting the sliced brie before she left it up, and I think I'm gonna replicate that. Let's see how I do. Ooh, pro stuff. That doesn't good. look as cool though without the cheese strip. No, it doesn't. We are back in the van after that amazing meal. Some of the best pizza that we've had in a while here. They didn't have the Kentucky... Derby pie. Yeah. TM. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't have the Kentucky Derby pie. All that means is that we'll have to come back to Kentucky to try that pie. Tonight, there's only one more thing here to do in Louisville even though there's plenty to do here in Louisville just in general, but that is cross the bridge into Indiana. Now that we have officially crossed the Ohio River, we are in Indiana. It is hard to believe that we only have a few states left until we have completed our 50 state goal. Thank you all for watching. We really do appreciate each and every one of you, and we hope you all join us in Indiana. We'll see you there.